What's going on? You're listening to King Cam's Unjumbe's podcast. Unjumbe means message. And the message is the kings before the pharaohs. Yeah, I said it. The kings before the pharaohs. We're going to discuss the followers of Horus or Haru. Um, or they call them Shimshu Haru. Uh, last time, we discussed the Nile River. Uh, Egyptian origins and uh, that King Horus or Haru was a real person before he became a myth, a legend. And those that came after him donned the name or titled the followers of Horus. So we're going to talk about that. They became so popular that according to the book of coming forth by day, the followers of Haru were worthy of emulation. They said, may I be one of the followers of Horus. And according to John Jackson, in his book, The Introduction to African Civilization, Horus was real. So the scholars and Egyptologists um, said the Pharaonic Age began 3200 BC. This period is called the First Dynasty. Um, and it was founded by King Aha or Menes. Menes was a Nubian and he united Egypt. He placed that two, those two states into one nation because there was Upper Egypt, which was basically Sudan and Nubia, and Lower Egypt, which is um, the Nile River Delta, the land of Goshen in that area. And so he united that because they had separate kings, separate uh, governors and rulers. So they united. And however, um, as time unfolded, the idea went on to assume that the Sphinx was around the same uh, age as the pyramids, which they were not. The Sphinx on record is 10,500 years old. Which, which makes it older than even the first dynasty, dynastic period. So in doing this, we will have to identify that there were kings and pharaohs long before this, and they were called the shining ones and the followers of Peru. Now, there's been whispers about this, um, full of mystery and, and as time goes on, according to uh, Mr. Robert Bovall and Graham Hancock in their books, The Message of the Sphinx and the Black Genesis, the kingdom of Nubia always had colonies along the Nile. And they were more ancient than the modern, what modern historians call ancient e Egypt. Dr. Ben points out that Ethiopia and Nubia had a high culture long before the kingdom of Kemet. So that was basically a Kemet before Kemet. Hmm. It has been noted that the kingdoms of the Nile were established like 36,000 years ago and had kings and queens that reigned for a very long time. We're about to get into that. So these kingdoms of Nubia and Ethiopia were established and they were very civilized. As the Egyptians already told us their origin story in the Papyrus of Hunifer, we came from the foothills of the mountains of the moon where God happy dwells. But who are these people that came from Sudan and Nubia, who were they? Who were these great ancestors or the ancient of ancient ancestors who founded Egypt, who colonized Egypt? Yeah, Ethiopia, according to Dr. Ivan Van Sernema in his book, The Egypt Revisited, he said that, he knows that Ethiopia said that Egypt was a colony of theirs. Interesting. And so these great ancestors um, 
wrote their story. Even the Greeks mentioned that the Egyptians said where they came from. So why are we going with these so-called modern historians saying that they came from aliens and things like that, where the Egyptians actually said that, hey, we came from Uganda and Kenya area. And there were kings before our king, queens before our queen. So during this time, there arose Nubians whose names will be, become legendary. We have Osiris, we have Tehuti, Isis, and of course Horus. During this time, they were the called the Anu people. Yeah. So before Kemet, and right around the reign of Nubia, there was the Anu people. And then once Horus passed on, because he was, was a real person, Osiris was a real person. Matter of fact, Osiris' tomb is still around today, and it still can be visited. So after Heru or Horus, then he, according to the Edfu text, he became legendary. He fought battles, raised wars with his uncle. We know the story. But this story evolved. And there was whispers coming from the sands. And after him, were the followers of Heru, and before Menes were the followers of Heru. So after Horus was a long line of kings that donned this title. So in the first, before the first dynasty, according to the Turin canon or the papyrus of Turin, it talks about the list of kings. These are on record kings before the pharaohs and they were all jumbled under one group and the Turin canon you can look it up the Turin canon has the list of kings and there was between 43 and 46 they call them great spears or followers of Heru and they reigned get this they reigned for 13,420 years it's a very long time. And they were identified in the pyramid text as well. So we have the Anu people. Osiris was a real person. His wife, Isis, was a real person. Horus was a real person. They were Anu people. They were Nubian, Ethiopian, right? Then after Horus, follow me, there was a long line of kings called the followers of Heru. And then it went from the Turin canon, talking about the 13,000 year reign of these kings, to the pyramid text. In the so-called, I would like to say, modern pharaonic age or the old kingdom. Even the followers of Heru became legendary. That they in the pyramid text were identified and they were the ones that led the kings up to the stars. So Osiris was a real person. Horus was a real person. After him, there was about 46 kings with titles and followers of Heru. Now, in the pyramid text, they noted that these followers of Heru would lead the kings to the stars, right? Also, the pyramid text grouped them under the word Pei and Neftis, or Neftin. Pei, the word Pei, P-E, was represented the kings of the followers of Heru from the lower kingdom. And Neptun were those from the upper kingdom or the south, Sudan. So the followers of Heru was given locations along with their names. So they were esteemed 
as great men and great leaders before the pharaohs, and they built monuments, some forever lost, you know, under the uh, Suez Canal. Some are still yet to be found under the sands in Sudan and ancient Mor in Morocco. They, these people built the Sphinx and they developed the idea of the pyramids. Hmm? So, during the 36,000 year period, they built these great monuments. They established themselves as great rulers and they had calendars and they looked up in the sky and said, this is uh, this constellation, and that constellation, and we're going to moder we're going to uh, gauge our days and our seasons off of this. And so, as the centuries moved on, they were they went from real people to legendary guardians before the old dynasty. Each one according to the pyramid text with the, the guys for the kings, right? The followers of Heru uh, could be not only kings and guys, right? They could represent a class of people. Get it? Now, remember, the, the ancient Egyptians, the people of Kemet, They've been around for a long time, duly noted. Ethiopia colonized uh, Nubia. Nubia colonized uh, Egypt. Horus was a real person. Paulus of Heru was a real person. But get this. They could also represent a class of people from the land of Anu, located in the Sudan area, and they were known for working metal. They were blacksmiths, according to David ba David Basil, Basil Davidson. I'm sorry. Their knowledge and their, their understanding of metals and smelting iron was kept in royal secret. It was like a secret order to them. The followers of Heru knew how to build and destroy. And these individuals became legendary. So the whispers are real. It's true that Egypt didn't come from aliens. It came from Ethiopia. It came from the foothills of the mountains of the moon in Kenya and Uganda. It came from the Batwa people. It came from the Anu people. All they did was put everything in stone. We know that Horus was a real individual and the kings that followed him donned that title, the followers of Horus, and those that donned that title became legends. So legendary that the oldest, one of the oldest books identified them as the shining ones and they guided kings to the stars. And also the followers of Horus was known as individuals who were blacksmiths. Hmm, we got more to talk about. But that's it for now. And this is King Cam's and Jumbe's podcast. And Jumbe means message. And the message is the kings before the pharaohs. We're going to go into detail about this. Because Egypt did not start in just out of nowhere started in the deep south in the heart of Africa. All right? If you want to, you know, if you like this information, please share, please follow, as well as um, if you want to be a sponsor to the show, let me know. You can message me or, and we can make that happen. Until next time, I will talk to you later.